Hello everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. It's week two of Shadows Remastered Draft, so I'm going to be jumping into a draft that uses the week two Shadows of the Past cards. I think this is a pretty cool twist on a draft environment. Uh, week one, the Shadows Remastered cards were pretty heavily focused on tribal lords, I would say. That was where most of the power was. Week two, I think it's a lot of flashback cards from Innistrad. So here we've got Unburial Rites as the Shadows Remastered card, which it's an okay card. I, I wouldn't... I mean, it's an inherent two-for-one, but it's kind of slow, and it does require you to have a creature that you can get back that's like, you know, at least a three- or four-mana creature. Or it's really not worth spending the mana on. I don't think that's the best card in this pack. I think the best card might just be a Cursed Witch. I found this card to actually be pretty strong. It's one of the few cards that uh, has remained in the set that's actually pretty good to sack to emerge. I think one of the things that got a little bit lost in making uh, this remastered set is like a lot of the, the cards that synergized well with emerge were cut which is kind of unfortunate. Here we've got another flashback card, Bump in the Night. Really not a particularly good card. This pack is quite bad. I could take Rabid Bite, although I think green-black is a pretty bad color combination. I could also just take Crypto with Fragment and maybe I wind up in some sort of three-color deck. I am playing uh, the traditional draft format, so best of three. And I think Invasive Surgery is actually a really important sideboard card in this draft format. I'm not going to second pick it, but it's a card that I'm generally pretty happy to have. Ooh, Spider Spawning. Okay. Maybe I should be more excited about Green Black. I kind of suspect that Spider Spawning really is more of a trap than anything. But it's a trap I'm willing to fall for. I think that it, the more sensible thing to do might be to just pick certain death or crow dark tidings here. Lingering Souls is a hell of a card. So I may be opting out of the spider spawning trap. This card was so good that it was banned in its block constructed format because they just thought every deck would play it. It used to show up sometime in people's legacy decks, which that was maybe a little crazy. So now I know that I want to play white and I probably want to play black. I think I'm just going to take Thraben Inspector over Deadweight or Certain Death, though. I've fallen for the trap of playing with Splendid Reclamation more times than you would believe. It's still possible Spider Spawning makes my deck. Um, White Green Beatdown is a, a real deck. I might want to take Hamlet Captain here. I think it's enough better than Steadfast Cathar. So, like, I might be a white green deck that's touching black for the flashback of Lingering Souls and, like, maybe Spider Spawning and a Cursed Witch. We'll have to see. Uh, Feeling of Dread is okay. I wouldn't say that it's a great card, though. I think I'm just going to take Byway Courier. It's a human. It's an inherent two-for-one. The Hinterland Logger wouldn't be a horrific pick, either. Second Hamlet Captain, which is certainly fine by me. I'm also a big fan of Confront the Unknown in these aggressive decks. But I'm just going to go with Hamlet Captain. So one of the cards I know is on the... Uh, the week two sheet is travel preparation, so I'm really well set up for a travel preparations kind of deck right now. The 
these cards are all kind of bad. I guess I'll take Strength of Arms. Probably won't play it. The week one sheet actually had a fair number of decent equipment for the human stacks. I don't think that it's going to work as well in week two. Uh, I'll take Invasive Surgery just in the sideboard. If, if Like the red-blue spells deck, this card is frequently very good against them. So it might be worth having. The Lunch Mantle... Probably won't play it. But maybe. Ooh, Confront the Unknown. Nice. I have had people play the Soul Separator card against me and it be okay. It is incredibly expensive. But if you have a good enough creature to get back, it is worth it. I don't really know how to feel about this Gold Knight Castigator. I mean, four power haste flying for four mana it hits incredibly hard, but it has a very substantial drawback. Regardless, I'm not going to play it in my white green deck, so it's not a consideration. I think I'm just going to pick Angelic Purge. This doesn't look like that good of a removal spell on paper because, you know, having to sack something is a pretty big cost, but it's just so efficient and, and it exiles and it hits most of the permanents you'd want to hit. It's not a card you want a ton of in a deck, but like the having one or two copies is usually great. Uh, here we have a Dauntless Cathar and a Sigardian Priest. Some good red cards. Rally the Peasants is also actually a very strong card. But I don't think I'm going to want to dive into having red man in my deck, which you, you kind of need both sides of this card for it to be great. I think I'm just going to take Dauntless Cathar. I already had a lot of two drops. Sometimes I would I would make the opposite pick there. It depends on how many one drop or how many two drops and how many three drops you have. Wow. Just live in the dream. Erdwell Illuminator in play and you confirm suspicion something. That'd be great. This pack is mostly cards I'm not really gonna play. Fifth Barrel Paladin isn't the worst card in the world, but it's it's pretty expensive for what it is. It usually doesn't make my deck. I'm just gonna take the priest. Ooh, Thalia's Lancers. Do I have anything to get with it? Is this a legendary Cryptolith Fragment? No. I'm a really big fan of this card. At, at the Pro Tour, when when we drafted with this set, I played a Gyre Reach Sanitarium in my deck just to get with Thalia's Lancers, because I had two Thalia's Lancers. This is certainly the highest upside card if I don't get any Legends, it'll probably work out worse than Dauntless Cathar, but I think it's early enough in the draft that I'm going to try for it. This is an older set, so there aren't really that many Legends to get is the only issue. Harvest Hand or Angelic Purge. The Harvest Hand would certainly be fine. I think I'm just going to go with an Angelic Purge, though. I want a Briar Bridge Patrol or Rabid Bite. I think I want Rabid Bite. I'm definitely going to play the Cryptolith Fragment because it provides me a source of black mana for Lingering Souls. I don't know... if I'm going to play the Accursed Witch or the Spider Spawning yet. I think I could have played Nod of the Bone as a sideboard card. This card... It's real. It was really good in some of the early, like original Innistrad decks. I'm not really playing the kind of deck that's going to fully take advantage of it, but I could see playing matchups where it would be good. So I've got a second invasive surgery potentially, a certain death which I could splash. I wouldn't be that excited to splash it to be honest, or like a blood briar which. I probably wouldn't play. 
I guess I'll t take the certain death. I don't know. I was considering just cyborg, like a cyborg invasive sur surgery as well. This pack really has nothing I'm interested in. You can kill people with fleeting memories. I guess I did that in the previous video I made. I think it's the most powerful card here. Maybe Wretched Griff is a better card. Don't think I have enough stuff for Moonlight Hunt to be a consideration. Guess I can take the Neglected Heirloom, but it also... I mean, if I really want to play Strength of Arms, I guess I could play it. I'm going to hate draft to confirm suspicions from whoever got that Erdwall Illuminator. I don't want the, them to live the dream. I'm going to be the person who lives the dream. I don't think I really want any of those cards. Hmm. Well, this is quite a pack for me after being a little bit disappointed by what I got in the last pack. I think Bygone Bishop is the best card for me. All three of these uncommons are quite good in my deck, and I think if I leave all three of them in the pack, I'm pretty much guaranteed to wheel one. Bygone Bishop is also just excellent on its own. I'm a little bit light on playables right now. Guess I guess, like, in theory, I could play Strength of Arms and Neglected Heirloom, I suppose. I don't think I have a particularly good spider spawning deck, even though I have a de I have mostly creatures. Like, the only way they're getting into my graveyard is if they die in combat, and that's usually not enough to make spider spawning good. The Accursed Witch is a little bit interesting because I do have ways to, get, to sack it with the Angelic Purges, and it is a human, so the Hamlet Captains pump it up. Here, I think I just want the Near Heath Chaplain. This is a pretty good card in any sort of scenario where you're racing with your opponent. It's very hard for people to... I mean, you can't race three power lifelink. You have to trade with it, and then there's two one one flyers. So it just generally works out fine. I had a deck in the previous week where I had Halpack Resurgence and three Immerwolves. It was... An incredible number of lords. All right, this card is great in my deck. I will happily pick it. Is this guy a, not a legend? I really haven't. I, I, have I even seen a legend since I got this? I maybe wasn't paying enough attention. I don't think I've seen a legend in my colors, at least. Is Hope Against Hope legendary? No. Murderer's Axe? That should be a legendary axe. This is just an easy bound by Moon Silver. Which is... I think Bound by Moon Silver is pretty clearly worse than Angelic Purge. With the exception of if you really, like... You have some deck where you just want to be able to sack all your permanents. Like, you have a lot of Blood Briars, maybe. I want the iron bound, the ironclad slayer. I can get back auras and equipments. I do have an aura. There's also that hope against hope, which might wheel. That's a card that usually gets picked higher than it should, though. I think it's between the slayer and the guardian of the pilgrims. I guess I'm taking the slayer. We'll see if we can get some sort of synergies for it. Hmm. Do I have enough cards? I should just take the land. I think I probably do. Like it's, it, I'd kind of like to play a swamp. And I could play the certain death. Which of these creatures do I want more? The dryad or the captive? 
yes, the captive. I'm really not getting the dryad up to being a 3 3, so we'll just take the captive. I don't think I want to play Pothary Carry Geist. It might be okay. Wait, I didn't wheel any of those uncommons like I thought I was going to. I've been robbed. Strength of arms work if you have auras. No, it's only equipment. You can certainly play it if you're not getting the 1-1, one, one, but it's pretty mediocre if you're not going to get the 1-1 one, one at least. Ooh. It's kind of a gift. So I'm playing black mana, maybe for a Cursed Witch, maybe I don't even play it, and for the flashback on Lingering Souls. I think if I didn't have Lingering Souls, I wouldn't play the Cryptolith Fragment and I wouldn't be thinking about playing black cards, but with Lingering Souls you really, you want that black mana in your deck. I do have this Apothecary Geist, which I wanted to check how many cards, how many ways am I going to have to have Spirits. We've got Lingering Souls, Near Heath Chaplain, Dauntless Cathar, Bygone Bishop. I think that's enough that it's pretty appealing. I think I really only want to play one Swamp. So I think I'm going to cut the Witch for the... Apothecary Geist. Do I have, so how could I, can I transform this? I'm not excited about this card if I have zero chance to transform it. I've got Uvenwald Captive, a Hinterland Logger, and a Cryptolith Fragment, which Cryptolith Fragments are, <laughs> that is a, a really long-term plan, like, what kind of a game are you playing where you get the Cryptolith Fragment transformed and then you still need your neglected heirloom to transform? That's not going to matter very often. How many creatures do I have? 16 plus Lingering Souls. I'm going to play the Thalys Lancer, even though I didn't get a legendary card. Just five mana for a 4-4 four, four first strike that's a human is good enough, I think, on its own. I think the only real question is, should I cut the Devil Thorn Fox for something else? don't think I have enough wolves for Moonlit Hunt. Drug Skull Shield, man, it's just kind of whatever. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play it like this. Pretty disappointing to be white-green humans and not get any travel preparations. I do think I got into the open seat, or the open deck for my seat. Which, this is a format where that's very important. This is a pretty heavily synergy-based format. If you're like, if you're trying to draft one of the overdrafted synergies, it, it, you're almost guaranteed to fail. I'd be surprised if they block. Had they blocked there, I'm not even sure I would have played Confront the Unknown. I think I might have just played the Courier. Probably to confront the unknown is not going to do anything in this combat. We'll see, though. I 
This is the start of a weird looking block. I guess they confront the unknown of their own. So my confront the unknown is going to be great here. Do need to find white mana, probably. Be surprised if I can actually win this game without playing any white spells. But I'm off to a good start. This Oryx Kindred card is, you know, it only does anything special when you're attacking. So it's certainly not a great defensive card. White mana. Excellent. Now I can comfortably attack with both of these. They're probably going to have the Skinner block the Hinterland Logger, and I'll flash in the Heron's Grace Champion. I think I might be flashing it in almost regardless of how they block. It's a massive life swing. Why did they block like that? Seems like a completely unreasonable way to block, but I'm just going to flash it in anyway. Like, it worked out better, f you know. They saved one point of damage over the more logical block of just having of just blocking the logger. So I guess it worked out slightly better for them than if they blocked reasonably, but I don't think that was a, a good way to block. I can very comfortably just sack a forest to Angelic Purge, this Kindred, or really anything. I don't think I'm going to trade my Heron's Grace Champion with the Kindred. Which it would be a trade. This is four mana to activate. Or maybe they have another Confront the Unknown. Either way, it's not a trade I was interested in. I think I'm gonna bound by moon silver, bound by moon silver, the timber shredder. But I'm gonna see what I find off of this treasure first. Definitely want to play the land. This hasn't been a great game for Uvenwald captive. I think I haven't even tapped it for mana a single time. It's just been a little bit awkward the way my curve has worked. They had nothing. So I'm going to Angelic Purge the Arsonists, and I think they're dead. I thought in week one, Red Green was not one of the better decks, but it was okay. I'm not really sure what the appeal of drafting in, in week two is. Because it, it seems like week two, the Shadows of the Past cards, a lot of the, the exciting cards that were added are the original Innistrad flashback cards. And in original Innistrad, red-green was quite bad. Do I want Gnaw to the Bone? Probably not. Gnaw to the Bone is best against a deck. Like, if I'm playing against a red-blue spells deck that I think is going to win by dealing... Like pinging me with a lot of thermal alchemists or like one giant attack from the mercurial geists, where if I gain, you know, eight or ten damage, that might be enough to. If I gain eight or ten life, that might be enough to really swing the game. That'd be good. This against red green, my deck versus their deck, it's just all going to be about who has a better board position. I'll probably just 
I, well, I will just trade here if they attack. Even if they have confront the unknown, it doesn't help them. They need a a you know more substantial combat trick. Which wouldn't be a you know it'd be a one for one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not sure what the opponent's really up to. Sadly, I only have two sources of black mana in my deck, so this is probably going to be sitting in the graveyard for some time. This might be a matchup where I should have boarded in the uh, Accursed Witch, just because it's so hard for the opponent to, you know, not have to trade with it on the ground. I guess I could have Incendiary Flow, which is... Very good answer to the Accursed Witch, but I haven't seen that out of their deck yet. They can flip this next turn, so even though it doesn't have a good block this turn, I'm just going to fail to get it out of the way because I'm an idiot. Ugh. Well, take that. I've wounded that guy. <laughs> I just needed to wait till after combat. Not my strongest play. This card has flash. There, there's no reason for them to be playing it the way they are. This card's also a lot worse than the lords that they just, all the lords they just removed. I guess I'm playing that. I don't know that there's any reason I have to have played it there, but it would come into play tap, so I might as well. This is a lot worse than all the lords they just removed just because it's not a creature. Which obviously makes a pretty big difference. Uh, they're now dead on board. It's been a comedy of errors this match by both players. I mean, probably wasn't a point in tapping that, but whatever. Sand is certainly on the slower side. One of the things I like about this format, though, is that it's uh, it's not as fast as Phyrexia One was, or Brothers War, and now my hand isn't just isn't even slow because I drew a two drop. Now my hand is just good. I'll probably play the Lingering Souls on turn three because it'll allow me to play the Apothecary Geist and gain three life on turn four. Also, I think I'm going to want... This is probably going to come down to racing. Whoa. Oh, did they do all three modes? No, they only did two modes. It's still a very aggressive choice to use. The, the duress mode there. These vampire decks are so much less scary now that they don't have the 2-2 Lord that gives everything first strike. Whoa. Uh, what the... I guess they just drew the Stromkirk. Cultist. I'm not even going to attack here just because I don't want them to go removal spell and hit a free card, especially when they're missing land drops. If they have Vampiric Fury, it is mighty bad for me, but I kind of have to block like this because of the Indulgent Aristocrat. Or I could not block, but I don't want to not block.
Now I get to be sad. All right, I'm gonna search my deck just in case I'm wrong, but I know I'm gonna miss. Let's take that action. Wow, the opponent got so lucky that I missed there. I thought I was gonna hit for sure. Let's see what we got coming. All right, that's a good enough blocker that I'm willing to attack. Hmm. Just bound by Moonsilver, the Gorgers, and attack. They're about to have to suicide into the Lancers. I guess my opponent is tired of me thinking about that. I think I would have played the Bound by Moonsilver and just attacked. Because it, it, Bound by Moonsilver has this weird property that you can move it around if you change your mind. So I could, I could get the forcing the Gorgers to attack into the Lancers on a later turn if I decided that was what I needed to happen. Do I want to make any sideboarding changes versus vampires? I don't think so. Missing a color, but as long as I draw a land, I'll have at least two plays. All right, I drew perfectly again. My strategy of drawing perfectly is really starting to pay off. Insolent Neonate is a card that I think... People probably overrated. It goes from being a pretty good card if you have like five or six madness cards in your deck to being pretty bad. Like it's 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 good here. I mean this is it it's card neutral. They dug through their deck. They it's sort of like it produced a mana. But in game one where they, they just discarded a you know a spell in the hopes of finding lands, that, that's pretty obviously awful. Yikes. Alright, please don't hit a land with the occultist. They haven't played a land yet, but they might just be holding a land to see if they hit a land off of Occultist. They did not. They hit Alms of the Vein. I'm definitely playing to trade as soon as possible with the Occultist, which is a little bit awkward for me. If I don't draw a land, I'll be forced to just play the Fragment next turn, which that honestly isn't that bad. I drew my land, but it's like, it's one of these cursed lands. I would never hated these lands as much as most people do, but they do definitely have their moments where they're quite bad, and that was one of them. I'm just going to kill the Blood Mad Vampire while I know that it's going to work. I am gaining three life from doing this. I lose a life from the Fragment, but that's fine. I'm not going to block if they attack. My deck is a little bit confused right now. I'm trying to get us both below 10 so the fragment flips, but I'm just all lifelink creatures. It's another one of those guys. All right. It's a little bit scary with what they got going on. Willing to fight me. They are. I think 
I'm just going to hold this in my hand. I know I'm not going to attack with it, so... I guess I, I messed up, though, because I would have attacked with it had I played it here. I'll play it this turn. Probably going to need to trade it. I think I'm going to block the Weirded Vampire with Heron's Grace Champion and one of my spirits. If they want, they can win the combat by sacking both of the things to the Indulgent Aristocrat. But then I would have Bound by Moon Silver to deal with it. I think I'd be in real good shape. Ooh, but these are cool cards, the increasing cards. I don't know that I would say that they're good cards, but they are cool cards. I'm going to save my Bound by Moon Silver for whatever their card they just tutored for is. Was it Faithless Looting? Because that'd be real weird. Was it Alms of the Vein? That would also be real weird. I guess if their deck has enough Madness cards in it, tutoring for... Faithless Looting maybe makes some level of sense. Like, that would only make sense if they, they really just didn't have any better cards in their deck, but maybe that's possible. Am I forcing them to sack here? I guess it doesn't make any sense. It's only two damage. My plan of ha holding the Bound by Moon Silver for whatever the good thing they got was really they they tricked me good because they just didn't get a good thing. I deliberately didn't deal one to each of us with the, the fragment. I think that my life total's low enough. I don't want to just decrease both people's life total by one. spell. That counts. How much mana is this? It's eight and then one off. And they can also, I think this just deals damage, right? Uh, well, loss of life. They don't drain me. I want to make that thing a four four? Not really. This is starting to get bad. I needed to draw them to draw something that wasn't a land and wasn't a vampire that turn. That probably
probably wasn't very likely to work out for me. Probably can't, or I probably shouldn't take any more damage that I don't have to because I'm already effectively at four and they seem like they, they could have alms of the vein or bump in the night in their deck very easily. Maybe I should have Nod of the Bone in my deck. It would be great this game. If I drew it at this point, it wouldn't have been pretty bad early in the game, obviously. Oh no, did they draw... That's bad for me, but it's not disaster level bad. I think they should have attacked before they spent their mana on this. I guess I would have I, I would have eaten the occultist. Uh, I guess if they're doing this, they've probably got a card that just allows them to kill me if they get three more damage through. I guess I can't actually block like that. Because of the bump in the night, I need to stay above three. I, don't, I would have taken two more damage if they had just pitched a card. This is rough because I do want to continue dealing damage to them to have any hopes of winning the game, but it's not going great. They tutor for another three point of burn card. Yeah. I guess against someone who's playing Bump in the Night, Alms of the Vein, I'm going to board in Nod of the Bone. Probably just for the Fox. I think the Fox is just my worst card. This is a 1-2-3 curve, even if it's not the best 1-2-3 curve ever. Turn 1, turn 2, turn 3. Turn 4, hopefully. This would be so much better if you prevented the things from being activated as well. This is going to be a hard setup to beat if they draw a bunch of Madness cards. Call the Bloodline Indulgent Aristocrat is rough when I, I don't have, I guess I have the Purge to get the Aristocrat off the board. I have two Purges in my deck and a Rabbit Bite and I'm about to get really lucky. Nope, I didn't get really lucky. Sad. Now that I know you fear me. Please don't have incendiary flow.
isn't going great, but it's also not going that bad. They've had the Call of the Bloodline in play for a bunch of turns and haven't done anything with it. Well, I guess, what, two is a bunch of turns? Two or three? I've also drawn mostly humans this game, so I'm definitely going to get a big chunk of life at some point from the Heron's Grace champion. think I want to attack with the Thraben Inspector because if I did that I would be kind of forced to play the Heron's Grace Champion this turn and I don't think I'm that interested in doing that. There's also the danger that they just have a Madness card which they did have a Madness card it's not that scary of one though. Why are they still playing lands? What are they planning to do with them? They're planning to increase their ambition. They did get to eight lands last game and flash this back, so... I guess I should respect that. They got some truly terrible cards, though. So they just went and got another Madness Vampire. It would be pretty good. Like Stromkirk Occultist. Or... I wasn't about to say where Sanitarium's going. It, like, this isn't the craziest thing to get, but why did they cast it? They should just throw it away to Call of the Bloodline. That's actually a pretty powerful play. Their plan is obviously to, you know, start sacking it to the aristocrat and getting it back. But that plan would just be so much more effective if they were just making one ones rather than casting it and having to have it die. Ah, I see. That's a good card. really isn't going to work out that well for me because I think they're going to block. I'm going to flash in the Heron's Grace Champion, which they know is coming. And then they're just going to transform the Pariah. So I'm really not going to get much life out of this whole deal. Yeah. It's still worth doing. Should I sack the byway courier? I 
think I will. I think I'll deal a point of damage and get a treasure. And then obviously I'm going to bound by Moonsilver, the giant vampire. The fact that they can put the neglected heirloom onto the indulgent aristocrat and have a giant lifelinker is not ideal for me. Why didn't they tutor for this last game? It's weird. Very concerning. did nothing on their turn. Seems suspicious, but I'm willing to walk into their trap. I do have a Sigardian Priest, which I could tap something if they madness out something big before blocks. Madness out Geese's bidding. That's fine. I don't think I even need to tap anything here. And they're gonna they get to trade with the Heron's Grace Champion, which is not what I was hoping for, but sometimes that's how it goes. I think I'm just gonna pass and transform my Uvenwald captive. As I said at the beginning of the game, Indulgent Aristocrat Call of the Bloodline is pretty hard to beat if people draw a bunch of Madness cards. And that appears to be what's happening. Did they draw another Madness card? Why didn't they spend any mana this turn? I think if this doesn't work, I'm probably going to lose. But I think if this doesn't work here, I was probably going to lose anyway. I don't know what. Well, I guess they could have like lightning axe in their hand. That would that wouldn't even work there. That'd only be five damage. I don't know what they could have that would make this go that badly for me. If you said bump it, bump in the night at home. You guessed correctly, but it really wasn't that bad for me. So they got some big life linkers, but I do have a tapper. This thing taps for two colorless now, right? Yeah. So I'll Tap a lifelinker and sack a clue. It's another very good card. I guess they're planning to use their mana on Call of the Bloodline, which makes sense. Ooh, it's a good draw. My uh, Bound by Moonsilver is in the graveyard. I actually probably could have attacked with the Uvenwald Abomination.
we can get this to 5.5. Five. Okay. I don't think this was worth it for them. They gained five life, but now they're just going to get attacked on the ground by a bunch of creatures that I would have held back otherwise. Were they dead if I'd gone would they oh, I could I could have just killed them if I had tapped their thing and attacked with that. I'm not paying very much attention. It's to my disadvantage, I think. This is too many lands. Much more reasonable. Another insolent neonate gamer. One of the most annoying things about this card is it, it does just get cause people to have priority all the time. I wonder if this means they don't have a land or they just didn't have want to reveal they had a land. I kind of feel like there was a pause there, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm glad I bottomed my fourth land, given that I've drawn two more lands. This guy again. Huh? Well, they certainly had had lands. <laughs> Why in the world they just pitched a land to deal one damage? I suppose I'm not going to block at all here. Because if I'm if I was going to block, I would double block the neonate and. If they have a Madness card and they just put like a Madness card in a land, it's kind of bad for me. Because I'd be giving up three life from the Geist. They made it easy for me though by pre-announcing. Is this like limited to one card a turn or something? Oh, maybe that's why they've been pitching all their lands. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say that makes sense, but it's an explanation. Sure, I'm going to want to do some form of blocking this turn. I'm not really attached to any of these creatures in any way. I think I forgot this thing could only discard once a turn. One thing you have to understand about these, this card and Noose Constrictor was that before this set came out, people had this memory of Wild Mongrel just being a really great card. And so there was this expectation when the cards came out that Noose Constrictor and Stromkirk Condemned were actually going to be very good. And, and in practice, they're, 
Like, they're pretty good limited cards. I wouldn't even say that they're anything special and limited, but they, they also just weren't even remotely constructed worthy cards. Whereas Wild Mongrel had been one of the best cards in standard slash the block constructed format that it was played heavily in. Uh, I need to keep remembering that it's just fine to play Bound by Moon Silver on any reasonable target. Do I want to be able to block the Insolent Neonate this turn? I guess I'm willing to hold the spirit back to threaten to double block it. It's a little bit lame because I think if I if they attack on a double block, they're probably just gonna sack it. But that's fine, I suppose. There is also some risk that they could draw I, like maybe Vampiric Fury, but they would have to draw it off the top of their deck. See, that would have been a perfect opportunity to sack that thing. Hmm. I'm just going to transform the captive this turn. How many lands did they pitch this game? Three. They drew a lot of lands. Suppose if they drew Galvanic Bombardment, this is kind of kind of go badly for me, but it, it's really not going to go that badly. Uh, okay. That didn't go badly for me at all. Failed to find. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I knew my bottom card was a land. I just effectively shuffled the land back into my deck for the lulls of searching and failing to find. No, not a good idea. I've been playing mostly the 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 best of three traditional drafts because I really don't like playing with the hand smoother, and I like to avoid it. Also, I think sideboarding is not not just sideboarding, but playing games two and three when you know more about what cards your opponent has in their deck, so you can make minor adjustments to how you play the game. I think that's an important part of limited. And my experience has been that I haven't played against too many people that really aren't making very good plays, but I, I feel like I've run into a, a bunch of mistakes this draft, which I don't maybe maybe my I, I've certainly made mistakes too this draft. And these are cards that are new to a lot of people, but the quality of play from my opponents has not been great. The number of insolent neonates they've had has been impressive. That that's been impressive. Hmm. 
No second land. That's that's not a good one. Maybe they're holding one of those uh, red-black lands that comes into play tapped in their hand, hoping to draw a land that would allow them to play it untapped next turn. That particular play makes no sense that I just described, and you should never do that. There are occasionally times when you're playing with those comes into play tapped lands that, like, if my opponent had all black cards in their hand and they had a mountain in their hand and they knew they had two forbidding ruins in their deck, it might make sense to just hold the mountain in their hand. You can get into situations where it's actually important not to make your land drop because it allows you to play a top deck land untapped. Turn two is not really one, would never be one of those situations though. The same thing can also happen in decks that have lots of fast lands. If you're playing the, like a, with a relatively low curve deck and you're, you're color screwed and you've got eight fast lands in your deck that produce that color, you might not want to play your third land. So I can bound by Moonsilver this. It won't stop it from being a madness outlet, but it will stop it from blocking or hitting me for four. So that's what I'm going to do. Also, I have the Ironclad Slayer in my hand, so it is possible that somehow the Bound by Moonsilver is going to wind up in the graveyard again. I guess I could sack it to Angelic Purge. That would be kind of a, a play I would only make if I had a ton of extra mana. Which I might have. If next turn I draw an untapped land, I'll probably play Dauntless Cathar, Uvenwald Captive. Then maybe the turn after that, I feel like I have so much mana that... And I want to save one of my lands. And not sack it to the Purge. That's, this this plan is sounding like it's not going to happen. Also, what's up with taking 6 damage from a Devil Thorn Fox when you drew instant on Neonate? Is the Neonate really that important to their plan? I don't think so. I'm certainly willing to trade the Devil Thorn Fox with the Neonate just because, you know, how am I ever going to, like, what would I have to do to not just have those things trade? I would have to play, like, Angelic Purge on the Neonate, which I'm not willing to do. I don't know why my opponent's not willing to do it, and I also don't know why they never just get rid of this thing when they have a Madness guy. I know I'm going on and on about these Neonates, but it really... It's not a great card, but if you you can use it slightly better and it becomes a somewhat okay card. This is a more of a this is actually it, it's a more respectable constructed card, I would say. Is you can build a constructed deck based around madness or maybe reanimating creatures. Or it actually, it's pretty good. When these cards were legal and standard, I played a mono red madness deck a fair amount, which it, the best card in it was definitely Smuggler's Copter. So that the Smuggler's Copter was doing most of the heavy lifting in that deck, I would say. But it was pretty good to Madness out, like Stromkirk Cultist. I, don't remember, I think I had Fiery Temper in my deck. There's probably one other Madness card. I think I had Insolent Neonates in my deck, too. My plan is to double block the Occultist if they attack me. I feel like they're working up to some sort of crazy end-of-turn insolent neonate usage that makes no sense. I 
Just a brief update, they've taken nine damage from Devil Thorn Fox this game in a game where they played a turn one insolent and neonate and it's in, been in play the whole time. They've taken nine damage from a Devil Thorn Fox, which for people who are not familiar with the Devil Thorn Fox, it's a three one with no abilities. It's not often that it deals nine damage in a game where the opponent has cast four spells. Now the opponent doesn't want to play anymore, I think. I could maybe have Geese's bidding, but I think it's more likely they've just given up. They have indeed given up. All right, well, I'd like to dedicate that trophy to Insolent Neonate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.